Hello and welcome to Bharat Shakti dot in. I am Nitin Gokhale. We have a special interview coming to you from Kochi with Admiral Anil Chawla, who is the uh, CNC or the Commander in Chief of the Southern Naval Command, also the Navy's training arm, located in Kochi, where the aircraft carrier one or the indigenous aircraft carrier one is uh, undergoing sea trials as we speak to him. Admiral Anil Chawla. Uh, CNC Southern Naval Command, also known as the Training Command for the Navy. Uh, welcome to this program. Uh, it's our privilege that uh, you found time to speak to us. Let me uh, get into the uh, the current topic about uh, the aircraft carrier uh, IAC-1 uh, having gone for sea trials, the future INS Vikrant. Um, if we have to really look at uh, the beginning of uh, history of aircraft carriers in India, uh, where do we begin, really? Uh, that's a very good question, Nitin. Uh, you know, and uh, I would say simply that the aircraft carrier was always there in the Navy's concept of operations. Right from the first plan papers that were made shortly after independence. Uh, and I must, uh, uh, every time I think about it, I must say that our uh, leadership has been extremely visionary. Uh, you know, successive generations of uh, senior naval officers and uh, naval officers in general uh, have been very visionary. So the first plan itself had, in, in, uh, had envisioned a three aircraft carrier navy. And this was, uh, you know, just shortly after our independence. Uh, so this uh, naturally progressed uh, slowly, of course, because after independence, the availability of funds was limited. The threat on the northern borders yeah. and the western borders was more immediate. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, in the middle of the 50s, we started our uh, aviation arm right mm -hmm. here in Kochi, yes. uh, in INS Garuda. Mm -hmm. And shortly thereafter, uh, we sent the team across to acquire the then HMS Hercules. To the UK. To the UK, uh, which had been lying incomplete, uh, partially completed uh, after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And that ship was uh, then selected and uh, the training started at somewhere in 1959. The team went there. And 1961, as now everybody is aware, yes. and that is uh, fortuitous, that's the 60th anniversary. That's right. Almost to the day. Correct. That the uh, Vikrant, first Vikrant was commissioned. Absolutely. And which played a big role in the 1971 yes. war. Hmm. And uh, that ship was uh, perfectly placed in 1971. It had matured the, uh, you know, the aircraft, the ordnance, the human aspect which runs it, which is probably the most critical, yeah. had matured. And so, as, as everybody is aware on the Eastern Theatre, it played a critical role in blocking the sea lanes and ensuring that uh, supplies and uh, additional troops could not get through to then East Pakistan, now Bangladesh. Yes. And that uh, hastened the victory Absolutely. tremendously. Yeah, Pakistan's defeat there in that 71 war. So we are actually speaking after 50 years of that war. Absolutely. Uh, so and, uh, <laughs> this is a very, um, uh, I would say, a big coincidence that uh, the next Vikrant, which is now, uh, right now is uh, Indigenous Aircraft Carrier 1, uh, has gone for sea trials right here in Kochi. That's right. Um, so tell us the, uh, the journey of, you know, the design, uh, the development and uh, the construction of uh, aircraft carriers in general, but uh, more particularly the uh, Navy's effort to indigenize it. How did it start? You know, that's a <clears throat> very important point that you raise. that it's like a building. Uh, you know, you first have to have a plan. The architect is the first person Correct. who designs the building. Yes. And then, of course, the construction takes place. So similarly, in the Navy, the Directorate of Naval Design, which is in Delhi, and there are two sections, one for ships, one for submarines. Uh, that is the, the start point, uh, because when a ship is conceptualized at naval headquarters, uh, you know, it's uh, broad parameters, what it should uh, be capable of doing, how much endurance it should have, uh, what, what all it can do at sea. All that is broadly decided. That broad sketch is then given to the designers, who then flesh it out. Yes. So they are the people who actually, you know, if you see, uh, this model is this of model the IAC-1. Of IAC-1. Mm. It looks very simple. Mm. Uh, but the fact is, the exact nature of the design, how the water will flow past it, the complications of the machinery, uh, you know, how many shafts it will have, how many engines it requires, what type of engines, Correct. what type of power generation, because it's like a floating city. Right. And uh, the airflow dynamics, the uh, for an aircraft carrier particularly, what kind of aircraft 
will uh, land on it whether and the it landing and the arresting uh, or the uh, yes. uh, the taking off yes. uh, all, all that you know it has to be taken into account the island superstructure which is uh, which is designed in a particular manner mm. its self defense capability so it's a it's a hugely complicated affair right so this is uh, i would say once again the vision of uh, you know our uh, forefathers in the navy who set up this naval design bureau in the mid 60s very early on in fact uh, grsc was the first yard to build yeah. a small indian patrol craft in the early 60s yes and this has now matured to an extent where uh, the dnd has made a design which when we have now tried out at sea is well uh, i mean as close to perfect as we can get the first sea trial yeah. was a proof of the pudding yeah in fact uh, i think india is what perhaps by the fifth or the sixth country in the world to uh, design develop and then manufacture that's right one of the seven countries of, which have which have designed aircraft carriers aircraft carriers mm. and uh, i dare say i mean uh, but it's a fact that this is the, not just the largest warship built in independent india but in the civilization of india <laughs> i'm sure uh, you know <laughs> this kind of tonnage is not this it is 40000 deployment 40000 40000 tons 40, displacement? 40, tons, 40, tons. 162 meters uh, long mm -hmm. and uh, this will be uh, uh, you know indigenous in many more ways than one Uh, the uh, hull itself is well all over 95% indigenous uh, you know the indigenization of the machinery and the weapon systems is also very high order in overall it's almost 60 76% indigenous content okay and uh, not only that but it will also be capable of launching the indig and you know deploying the indigenous uh, light combat aircraft when it comes in uh, the final version that we have so it will push indigenization in many ways ways right. yeah. than one because aviation is the the major part of this uh, aircraft carrier but also uh, a lot of people won't uh, realize that uh, while designs done by the dnd then the construction is done in the cochin shipyard the uh, kind of personnel and the kind of uh, different sections of the navy involved in uh, not just building this but now running it would be enormous i mean it would be all of navy approach i guess it is in fact uh, you know if i can uh, uh, start from the beginning right from the time that it is designed uh, there is a section in naval headquarters which does the you know under the directorate of uh, staff requirements and plans which does the outline plan which then collaborates with all the other directorates in naval headquarters uh, for the various requirements and all this is of course controlled uh, by the controller of warship and production the overall thing and finally of course by the vice chief of naval staff and the chief of naval staff at naval headquarters and thereafter the design bureau the, uh, the design department takes over the director of naval design they do the actual designing then the uh, the trans designs are transferred to the shipyard the shipyard uh, does the initial uh, detailed design but uh, to a large extent the director of naval design is always involved in constantly this. in communication yes. with them because this is a mobile thing you know in, you you will suddenly find that a particular pipe which was planned to be routed that way cannot because there is another machinery that is there right. so there are uh, iterations that happen all the time Correct. and so it is a constant to and fro between the shipyard and inside the shipyard itself we have a warship overseeing team mm. which plays a very critical role right. in interfacing between the naval headquarters uh, the en entire staff out there and the shipyard out here as also with the command because the command southern naval command being co-located helps out in many administrative and technical aspects sure. uh, with the uh, resources that we have available locally uh, then the warship overseeing team is responsible for the stage by stage construction the trials clearing the next stage mm -hmm. uh, in this particular case being a very complicated ship we also have a full fully f uh, independent carrier acceptance and trials team okay. because there is a huge amount of equipment that requires to be so they have to test it and then uh, yeah. so the trials are cleared by mm. this particular team right. then we have a separate uh, training team mm. the carrier uh, training team uh, you know being the training command <laughs> exactly. it is fortuitous yeah that uh, it's co-located it's co-located mm. so uh, the training facilities that are required for the navigation training the ship handling part Uh, virtually everything the communication training right. uh, the uh, damage control and fire fighting training is all co-located within uh, you know a few hundred meters yeah. of the ship mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, uh, the flag of the sea training and the indian naval workup team right uh, now this normally uh, goes to work uh, you know when the ship is finally commissioned and ready for getting uh, into into an operational mode mm -hmm. 
But in this case, uh, you know, we have been working with the workup team. Mm. We've been working up the ship's crew as they come in in various batches. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the, the feedback that I've got from the commanding officer and the pilots who have flown from the ship mm -hmm. indicates that the ship is already at a very high level of uh, uh, efficiency and efficiency and readiness. Yeah. So, I mean, just to give, I mean, like give our viewers the examples. When uh, INS Vikramaditya had to be brought in, or uh, sort of uh, from Russia. Imagine the number of people you had to send to Russia to do the acceptance trials, Absolutely. the you know the workup team and the training team. Absolutely. Here, uh, I think you've not only saved money, you've saved a lot of time. Yes. And uh, I think the iterations would have been uh, very good. And you know, the other thing which uh, what happens is that you build up expertise. When, you, when you're there from the beginning of the keel laying and the you know, fitment of equipment, the experience, uh, the, uh, you, you know, the history of each equipment, its operation, how it was installed, uh, what went wrong, what went right, exactly. uh, what needs to be ensured in the future, it's all available. Right. And uh, so that continuum is recorded in great detail. Yes. And it helps successive crews uh, to, uh, you know, even maybe 40 years hence, because carriers have a long life. Yeah, we, absolutely. We expect this to be around for the next... 40 to 50 years. <laughs> exactly. You had the first two Hercules and Hermes converted into uh, Vikrant and Virat. Yes. Uh, you in, yourself commanded the Virat. I remember 10, yes. 11 years ago when I was here, I had boarded uh, Virat when you were the captain of the ship. Uh, so that way, yes, 40, 50 years. But uh, what's the uh, timeline now? The first, uh, are you calling it the basin trial or the sea trial? And then what next? No, this are the, these are the, the first contractor sea trial. It's technically called a CST, but you can call it a sea trial. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basin trial happened uh, last year right. in December. Okay. In fact, I was privileged to start the GTs okay. and then do the basin trials also. Right. Mm -hmm. So now this is the first trial. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this being the first trial, we've been able to you know, really push these trials along a lot because of the kind of preparatory work that went on alongside. And uh, so we have been almost able to achieve uh, full power in the first sea trial, which is, which is not normally uh, done. But, you know, we had a longest sortie, yeah. despite the sea being a bit rough in the mm. monsoons. Yeah, this is a very rough period yeah, anyway. <laughs> but it's an aircraft carrier, so, you know, it's, it's proved its uh, metal in terms of stability, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, speed that it can do. And uh, we have finished the basic trials of the engines and the steering gear and many other yeah, ancillary equipment sure. like the uh, water pl uh, reverse osmosis plants for mm -hmm. generating water, right. uh, the communication trials, the helicopter trials have really, you know, progressed phenomenally. We've mm -hmm. been able to prove all our platforms. So landings have happened now, helicopter yeah, landings. The so. landings have happened, mm -hmm. the pilots have got comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's been a major uh, boost uh, to the... Uh, uh, ship's crew to, to the Navy as such, right. uh, the confidence that has uh, been built up mm -hmm. uh, by the first sea trial. Uh, now, I anticipate that things will move pretty fast from mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and uh, the second phase of the fitment of equipment which will then entail the subsequent sea trials and finally, of course, the most important part. <laughs> the, the commissioning. The land, no, the, the landing, the of, landing the, of the aircraft. Uh, the, uh, the, the fighter aircraft. Fighter aircraft mm -hmm. Because uh, that's what her primary mm -hmm. role is. Sure. That's the most important part. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that will go off very well because this is designed as a proper aircraft carrier. Correct. And, uh, you know, there's enough deck space, uh, there's enough uh, width of the ship to allow, uh, you know, aircraft to be maneuvered easily. And this is tow bar. Yes. Yeah. So again, if you can explain to viewers what it means. That's right. So, mm -hmm. so there are basically, uh, uh, I would say, two types, uh, largely two types of aircraft carriers. Mm -hmm. One is Catobar. The original Vikrant was uh, Catobar, which means catapult assisted takeoff and yeah. recovery. Right. Uh, and uh, if you have seen the old videos, it used to be launched pretty much like a slingshot yes. <laughs> yeah, with the like that. Yeah. engines on mm. and you know mm. holding yeah. the, it being held back and then just shooting yeah, off the deck. Mm. Uh, the uh, uh, and the recovery, of course, is uh, by arrested arrest wire, arrest right. wire mm. landing. Mm. Uh, in the middle, we also had the V-stall aircraft. Right. When, uh, if you recollect, when I was commanding Virat, That's we had right. the Sea Harriers. Sea Harriers. Yeah. So there, obviously, you did not require <laughs> either uh, catapult-assisted takeoff mm. or. Uh, uh, recovery gear because it was vertical takeoff and yes. landing. Mm. Now, in terms of the MIGs, uh, in this ship, we have got the stow bar where there is a inclined uh, takeoff ramp, yeah. which allows, uh, you know, because these are very high performance aircraft and they require 
runway kind of much greater uh, <laughs> landing area yeah. uh, and to actually take off in less than uh, you know uh, probably in, in some cases can even take off less than 100 meters but mm. normally we keep around uh, 150 to 200 meter. meters yeah. uh, as the ideal uh, on most carriers for yeah. takeoff mm -hmm. uh, the, the the inclined ramp assists in giving it the sort of uh, lift Boost, that yeah. is required yeah. Uh, because of the uh, uh, the short runway that it has that's right uh, and then it has a arrested landing right. same three wires correct uh, but you can imagine uh, aircraft coming in at that speed and then being arrested like that yeah, yeah. the skill required to just absolutely catch one wire <laughs> you know a few meters apart yeah, exactly. and out of the three you have to catch one that's right uh, so these are the uh, uh, sort of uh, things that we will do in the final phase of uh, the uh, ship's uh, sure. trials Sure. And then we uh, we will be commissioning it, uh, so we hope that by next year it will. So once it yeah once it gets commissioned, India will have two aircraft carriers. That's right. And uh, that uh, first vision, uh, the initial vision of three aircraft carriers, is something is still alive. Yeah, it, sure. it'll be one step closer one to step reality. Closer. <laughs> so and also the the kind of expertise that has been built up in uh, doing it indigenously, uh, that uh, can uh, again be used uh, if uh, necessary. When we talk about the expertise that has been built up, uh, it is uh, phenomenal. We start with the designers. Right. You have people who have designed an aircraft carrier now mm. successfully. Mm. Now, once they sort of continue with the next design, hopefully a larger and more capable aircraft carrier, mm. then the capability of the uh, uh, human resource and design grows. Mm. And it has many spin-off benefits. It's not just restricted to designing aircraft carriers. It then spills over into designing better ships, mm. more modern uh, uh, kind of uh, stealth, stealth uh, platforms, and various other naval platforms that can be used for a variety of uses. Right. When you come down to the construction level mm. as such, uh, now Cochin Shipyard here, for example, has built up an expertise, a workforce. They are the yard that uh, refits all our aircraft carriers in any case. Right. So the expertise required to not just get the aircraft carrier in mm -hmm. but to dry dock it then to refit it sure. uh, the kind of uh, ecosystem that has been built up uh, in terms of industries sure. small and medium scale industries mm -hmm. is is phenomenal Absolutely. i mean i'll just uh, because of the list of detail i thought i'll just read it out sure, to you sure. that you know just for vikrant uh, as far as the steel is concerned it is uh, dm you know dmr 249 Alpha from, from the Steel Authority of India Limited. Right. It has been indigenized, indigenized with, uh, you know, about 15 years ago. Exactly. And this was the first ship that was built with indigenous steel, mm. including the bars, the bulb bars of the ship, which are, uh, you know, another specialist uh, kind of uh, casting. Mm -hmm. they, they are now indigenous. So now all the steel that we have yeah. is, is can be used for building indigenous ships, not just warships, but it can be modified. commercial ships also. Different, mm. uh, different grades are used for commercial ships, right. can be used for that. Mm. We have, uh, you know, uh, the uh, air conditioning and refrigeration plants from Kirloskar, steering gear from, the, uh, from LNT, uh, compressors from Elgi, uh, pumps from Beaconware, I mean, you know, RO plants from Rokem. Mm -hmm. There are a huge number of uh, electrical machinery from various, uh, uh, you know, mediums, uh, small scale, micro SMEs, we have a lot of uh, uh, ordnance factory uh, equipment on board. We collated some facts uh, about the construction of the indigenous aircraft carrier. Uh, over 40,000 Indians have received direct and indirect employment while the construction of ship is going on, mm -hmm. and that's happening right now as well. Mm -hmm. Over 2,000 people work per day from all across India on the ship, uh, and uh, you, you know, obviously receive employment because of that. Uh, more than 50 Indian SMEs, SMEs, uh, MSMEs and PSUs have participated in the construction of the ship. And many smaller vendors, I mean, I would say there must be at least 100, 150 smaller vendors supplying things as small as nuts, bolts, right. you know, uh, welding material, uh, all that. So it, this entire ecosystem that is generated uh, generates a lot of employment and economic activity. Right. Uh, and thereafter, of course, it percolates down, as I was mentioning, to, yeah. you know... Uh, the living quarters, uh, yes. food... Like yeah, the accommodation for these people, exactly. the roti kapra makan issues, yeah, yeah. where again a lot of people gain employment. Right. So, uh, I think over and all, uh, this, this ship has uh, been a boost, not just for the local economy, mm -hmm. but for many industries across the country. Right. And uh, this is something that we need to keep pushing. 
because uh, if you really want to make uh, many more warships for india and uh, for the rest of the world if you know when we're looking at the export market mm -hmm. this is an advantage that we have built up today that should not be frittered away absolutely so i think uh, the uh, the uh, the point that uh, inflection point that we are at uh, for the isc1 which is going to be ins vikrant uh, in about a years time maybe uh, is huge and i think uh, this should be uh, something that we should be uh, very proud about and uh, also look to uh, capitalize on uh, one final question uh, like uh, the aircraft carriers uh, like we said it's one of the seven countries or six countries india is doing um the utility of aircraft carriers and the training that your crew is now doing the the number of people who will actually get expertise on this uh, is also something that uh, one should look forward to yes uh, the uh, expertise particularly i would say mm. specifically of flying from the deck mm. of an aircraft carrier right. uh, that is something that uh, is not easy to come by it requires a lot of practice yes it requires a lot of skill it requires mm. a lot of investment in training sure. in human resources so this uh, uh, unless you have you know uh, at least three aircraft carriers of which two are operational at any given time right that that means the crew can be then in a constant state of operational readiness right. rather than just having to have a break sure. when the carrier is not available correct and i think that is what is most important mm -hmm. so minimum two uh, and uh, flying the same sort of aircraft right uh, but i think uh, uh, three would be ideal because that's what the uh, you know strategic scenario is today absolutely and with our uh, contemporaries and adversaries also arming up in this absolutely. manner absolutely yeah uh, so i think it makes uh, the aircraft carrier makes uh, sense in many ways uh, it has strategic sense right. uh, it has a sense from an uh, you know deterrent point of view it has sense from the image building point of view if you yeah. look at it just from yeah. that power projection as they call yeah, it yeah. as as a sort of an image building exercise mm -hmm. it is also sense from the industrial and economic point of view right uh, and of course uh, you know uh, many people can say rightly that uh, a lot of money Uh, is spent on aircraft carrier but if it is indigenous uh, i would argue that actually it is plowed back and it actually grows yeah you know the entire thing grows rather than just being in so it's it's an investment true in short and which will pay off in the long run is what uh, what you're thinking of absolutely so admiral chawla thank you very much for your time and such uh, great insights about the aircraft carrier and the way we are now uh, moving towards commissioning of uh, iac1 uh, in the future in another year's time thank you very much for your time thank you Thank you for coming and uh, wish you all the very best. Pleasure.